As you know, here at Radio.co, we like to review and heartily recommend an awful lot of broadcasting kit. Kit that is sure to get you on air quicker than you can say, testing, testing, one, two, three, and sounding impeccable whilst doing it. But there is perhaps one single piece of equipment that has featured in more recommend lists and tutorials above all else. The sleek, affordable and professional Focusrite Scarlett 2i2, an audio interface that even the most green novice broadcasters amongst you will still know the name of, probably. Simple in both design and capabilities, the fantastic Scarlett range of audio interfaces from Focusrite have been a trusty, professional sidekick to hundreds, if not thousands, of audio projects across the world for the last 10 years, and it'll take something truly spectacular to mark them as completely obsolete. Just like, I don't know, the Focusrite Vocaster 2! The brand new Vocaster range from Focusrite is their latest effort into defining the pop-up podcast studio space. It's a sizable upgrade to the humble 2i2 that leaves that once cute, sleek, red brick of broadcasting goodness quaking in its booths. Capable of doing much more than merely housing your XLR microphone, the Vocaster boldly insists and convinces you it's the only thing you need for your solo or duo run show, complete with optional phone and camera connectivity to really take your show to the next level. But is all of that really necessary considering the 2i2 seemingly does the job I need it to? Well, let's find out, shall we? So the Vocaster 2 interface itself is retailing for around £290 to $300. But if you're as fortunate as us, then for £470 to $500, you can bag yourself the Vocaster 2 Studio that not only contains the interface itself, but also a high-quality dynamic microphone, Exhibit A, and a pair of closed-back on-ear headphones, Exhibit B. Cool, so let's take a look inside. Um, I can tell you now that the unboxing is going to be slightly barer than it would be because, of course, we've already got part of the goods itself. The microphone and the headphones are already on. This is the Focusrite DM2 and the Focusrite headphones. I don't know if they have a special name for them, but hey, we'll find out in the post. Whoa, 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 freeze frame. This is Phil from the future. And we actually found out that after we'd recorded this, the uh, the bundled microphone with the Vocaster 2 Studio Pack has actually gone through a bit of a name change. So whereas it does display, and I do refer to it being the Vocaster DM2, it's actually now called the Vocaster DM14V. Back to you, Phil. Keep it up, mate. You're doing great. Uh, but hey, so this is the actual device itself, the beautiful Vocaster 2. So we've got the actual uh, interface itself, which is sleek, small, perfect, and capable of so, so much more than what your 2i2 can currently do. So we're going to explore this in a moment. And of course, you'll also need the things that operate it, such as a supplied XLR microphone. And even if you're lucky enough, a tangled cable to go alongside with it. Uh, that's just my poor uh, uh, boxing back. Uh, the XLR microphone will only be provided if you do get the studio pack, because of course you need it to run your microphones, but you will otherwise always get the USB cable, the USB A to USB C power cable. Here it is in all of its beautiful glory. Look how lovely and delicious that is. Um, it's quite light, a nice little light device. It's got this. Uh, I thought it was like, you know, like a marble counter that you might find in your posh kitchen. Uh, so this is entirely made out of uh, recycled plastic. So it's a really nice, conscious, environmentally friendly uh, device. Um, a, lot, a lot smoother than the usual sort of harsh metal brickness, as I mentioned before, of the Focusrite 2i2. But you can see it's got your... Uh, dials here for both your uh, yourself as a host and the guest because as I mentioned the Vocaster 2 is geared towards uh, duos you know you and a guest um, the Vocaster uh, 1 actually just has one port which is you as the host so kind of decide whether you want to go for a second port or just the solo option um, we've got a couple of buttons here I'll go into a bit more detail shortly about them but you've got your mute button your auto gain and uh, so a couple of presets for you to use of course, you've got the uh, the gain dial for yourself here. Uh, and at the back, you've got your two XLR ports, as I mentioned, for your host and guest, and they are labelled as so. How handy is that? Uh, you've also got your phantom power. You've got your speaker outputs to plug into there. Your power button, 
love a power button. Uh, and then also these two little, uh, or three rather, new additions which weren't found in the Focusrite 2i2. First of all, you have your camera connectivity port. So this is for you to plug a, I'm sure Rowan behind the camera will be able to tell me the exact name of the cable, TRS cable? Yeah. He says, yeah. I think that's right. Uh, and, you know, a, a, a 3.5 millimeter cable, you know, you know what I'm on about. Uh, but this is to plug directly into your uh, camera's microphone, so it's completely synced um, audio. Uh, we've also got the phone connectivity as well, which you can use to plug directly your phone into, um, you know, to play audio or clips that you may have on there. Also, take calls seems to be a great trend amongst a lot of devices these days to incorporate a way of connecting calls, particularly if you're a radio broadcaster. Or alternatively, there is the nice Bluetooth option. <sighs> yes. So this will allow you, to, uh, allow you to seamlessly connect your mobile device and use it via Bluetooth again to either connect calls or play audio. So um, yeah, put it you know put it next to each other here. Very very different. Um, it's when I go through it, it's going to be quite surprising about how much you can actually do with this little device. But Hey, you know, enough talking about it. Let's plug it in and uh, check out how it sounds and also explore a couple more of its functions. Well, here we go. The Vocaster 2 from Focusrite, all hooked up and ready to rock and roll. Uh, you can see a couple of lights going, like the dial for my gain, for example, which uh, obviously I'll be discussing a little bit more in detail, as, and as well, a couple of lights here. Don't worry, that's still to come. Um, but before I kind of jump into everything, as you can see, Focusrite, well, focus with the Vocaster series is to make broadcasting or podcasting anything from anywhere in the world an absolute cinch. So that all that within this gorgeous little interface is everything you need to very easily record and manage crystal clear audio. And I'm going to kind of go into a bit more detail about all the different channels and you know options you have within it uh, in a moment in the what I'm about to call the Vocaster Hub. But that's something that they've created to be kind of like the epicenter of your entire broadcast. So giving you ease of access to really set up, record and edit the quality of your recording. So the features that you can control from within and away from the Vocaster Hub include, first of all, a really cool nifty feature is the auto gain. Now how this works is usually what you're used to be doing or you know what I've been doing prior to this is adjusting my, uh, my gain just through this knob here. So you can see from the levels, I'm changing it for the better or the worse. Um, but if you don't trust your ears or you don't trust the ability to be broadcasting yourself at the best uh, uh, quality possible, you can actually consult a piece of equipment to let it do it for you. So all you do is you speak into the device in your regular volume and tone, like I'm doing now, and it will set to the accurate gain for you, which is pretty nifty, and I'll give it a whirl in a second. Um, but of course, you know, if you are distrusting of AI, you can just manually set it up here. But if you want to just know what it's uh, how it works. So what I do is I'm going to keep hold of this host button, as you can see right at the bottom. Uh, and then what it would do is the audio is going to change slightly. So what you'll hear isn't the auto gain, it's just the processing of it. So if I give this a little go, and then which it should do in a couple of minutes, which I think is what it's actually done now. So do I think this is the accurate pitch for me? I'm not too sure. I'd rather set it myself uh, because I do like to talk a little bit louder and I do like to hear myself, particularly with a more sensitive microphone. So I'm going to change it myself. But depending on the microphone you have and, of course, the vocal uh, volume and tone of your voice, uh, it may find you the most accurate setting for you personally. Uh, another feature here. So alongside the bottom, we've got our mute button, which if I press, and it's muted by voice. And the other button here next to it is the enhance button. So these are presets that are available to you that have been allegedly podcaster approved to bring out different clarities, different styles of your voice with four different options to choose from. Um, so there's a radio setting, there's a one that's supposed to boost uh, the highs, the mids and the lows. And I'll, I'll kind of use a few examples of those in just a moment. I've also got it currently hooked up to Bluetooth on my phone, which can be again used for playing calls or content. Um, let's have a look if we can play something from radio.co. So all you do is initially is you press the Bluetooth button and it will then obviously find the device. It just says Vocaster BT. Um, and then if I just press anything Hi here. Hi there, my name is Phil and thanks for checking out radio.co. On the back, you do have that option to then plug in uh, this device into a camera microphone. And the, obviously the big plus of that is, of course, you know, it's, you know, you don't have to sync like a Rowan behind the camera. It always has to sync things up with the cameras uh, to what I'm using on here. However, if we did plug it into, if we decided to plug it into the camera directly, there's no need to waste a lot of time syncing everything 
backing up. It's just perfect there. So usually when I do test these devices, of course, I'm actually testing and working out how the actual thing in front of me works. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to jump to the software first. As, as I mentioned, Focusrite have created this Vocaster hub, which is meant to give you a secondary digital view to easily configure all your inputs, your levels and your vocals. So you can see all my levels are going. Um, you can kind of see a slider here of where my gain is. So I can actually adjust this accordingly and it affects my voice there. Obviously, I don't want to have it peaking too much. So that will do the job, the same job as the dial in here. And actually, if I do adjust this, you can see the dial itself is actually changing on the device, which is pretty nifty. Um, you've also got a digital representation of all the buttons that are on there, like the mute, uh, the enhance, and the auto gain, if I did want to use that uh, again. And uh, likewise, you, know, you can use the Vocaster hub to actually adjust everything to do with your guest um, as well. So the, the main... I guess I say the main thing, but really the most impressive thing here is, as I mentioned, there are so many different options for inputs that you can have in the Vocaster 2. And they're all represented here. So even though there's very limited functionality per se on here, you know, if you wanted to adjust the exact volume range of your Bluetooth, uh, the, the loopback, as I mentioned, about the, uh, you know, the audio coming from your computer, that is all done here. So, okay, so I've got my mic levels here. I can adjust them accordingly, my guest. Uh, the auxiliary cable, so everything to do with that's plugged into the microphone option can be adjusted here. The Bluetooth again, so if I did play that uh, video from me, that can all be adjusted here. And I could actually set that and have the Bluetooth level permanent. Likewise, I've got that loopback audio, which if I was to play audio from my computer, like that um, Radio.co YouTube video I showed you before, or a trailer for something, or uh, a bit of music, maybe on Spotify, things like that, then I can actually set the gain permanently and have it just set ready there and obviously of course I can change that accordingly and if I wanted to change anything to do with the overall mix that is all there so really this is exactly a digital representation of what you've got here but it makes managing the device so so much easier so um, I mentioned before about the um, the uh, the enhance feature so this is kind of a little personal gripe with me might not be anything that works for you but for me i find generally presets on these devices don't do me any personal favors you know um i feel like i've got not a unique voice but i'm quite i like my quite my low toned voice and i feel like a lot of presets that are available don't really do anything to kind of elevate it sounds a little like a egotistical maniac there. but you know, you know what I mean like you know a lot of these presets kind of boost different areas that don't really benefit me so I'll show you what these options are so if I go to enhance uh, first of all I've turned the actual feature on so you can actually hear there's a difference in my voice almost immediately but I can change it to something else so that was a option called warm uh, it's up to you to decide whether you find that warming yourself uh, there's also clean I should tell you what, that warm feature made me sound a little out of breath. <laughs> kind of made me a little scared. Uh, so now I've got one called clean, uh, which is the, the first option here. So this is what clean sounds like. I uh, don't know if there's any difference to what I sound like dirty. Maybe I did sound dirty before, and uh, this will clean me right up. I kind of, again, with another gripe as well is not that it matters too much, but there isn't any, like numerical values on this, or on both the device and the Vocaster hub. So even though I know great i'm maybe about five sixths of the way up this uh, this mic level gain meter i don't actually know what that means other than of course using a bit of math and working it out for myself now i mean audio interfaces mixes things like that you know you don't really have numerical values on them anyway you know uh, you know the, the focus right 2i2 was the same you just you know got it where you found was most comfortable for your voice but i feel within a additional platform to help you do it there should be something that just tells you what you are in a bit more of an accurate way that's just my opinion of course like i said it doesn't affect the the performance and the overall um you know feel and worth of the device it's just something i would like to know really being a bit of a, an audio nerd myself now right to the bread and butter of everything if that's the, the right term uh, the interface itself so uh, comparing it to the Focus right Scarlet to I2, you know, of course, the, the device itself is very square, very metallic, of course. Um, whereas this one is a lot smoother, a lot prettier, a lot more 
curvy and you know it's it's, it's 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 an attractive piece of kit and although i do like the smooth rounded out look of the device i think i still kind of prefer that metal body of the scarlet because in kind of like a similar opinion i had to the the vault 2 from universal audio that i uh, reviewed uh, the other month i just think kind of like metal blocks arguably look a bit more radio um you know for lack of a much better less douchey phrase uh, but uh, yeah i just think I, I do like how that looks uh, i think it just looks a bit more yeah old school but of course they're not appealing to old school broadcasters in a way it's the podcasting pop-up space so i think this is again still an incredibly attractive device and again it's impressive about how much is actually fitted into this now something that doesn't affect me nor really bother me in the slightest is actually the lack of any line in port or instrument ports rather so you know as you can see with the vocaster 2 at the back is just the standard xlr port but in the scarlet 2i2 and indeed pretty much all of their other competitors, there is the option to plugging an instrument into it. And although arguably, yes, the Vocaster 2 isn't geared towards musicians or content creators and that sort of side of things, is strictly for, are you a podcaster? Yes or no, buy this, don't buy this. Um, I, th I think the fact that you don't have that option is it is, does mean that at least part of your audience or potential audience may be turned away from it. So as you can see, I've now roped Rowan in. Say hello, Rowan. Hello, Rowan. Hey, see what he did there. Um, kind of just to show you what this setup may look like, because as I say, you know, the Vocaster 1 specifically is just for solo broadcasters, but the Vocaster 2, and probably one of the selling points for it, like the rest of their line of, of uh, you know, prior kit, is setting up for two people. So this is what it would look like setting up for two people. And, you know, you as the host, you know, and the guest, you know, you have the ability to mute them. So, you know, just say something uh, really horrible about me, Rowan. Uh, Phil, you no, not even, not even got a chance. No, no, we can't even hear him on the show, so it's absolutely fine. Um, but you know, that's why he's always going to say nice things about me. So you can mute everything here, as I say, mute yourself. So if, if uh, Rome was talking to me now, nice things, ideally, I can say. Phil, you smell so good today. Thank you, which is really great considering it's uh, it's quite a warm day here it in Manchester. It's very warm. <laughs> it's very warm. Uh, the other studio kit that came with the box, with as I say mentioned, we were gifted with the uh, the box that includes the interface, the microphone, and the headphones. Quick thoughts on those. I do think the Focusrite DM2 here has been, you know, sounds really really good. I've been using it throughout this video, so to me at least, it sounds amazingly clear vibrant complementary towards my low vocal tones you know the the same sort of quality i would find in like the universal audio sd1 that again that i reviewed not too long ago so my thoughts on this is it's if you are looking to buy an interface and you don't have a top quality microphone as of yet or you know you are looking to upgrade one then it is I reckon it is worth considering getting the studio pack as well to benefit from this fantastic microphone. And as well, you know, the headphones do come with it. On the topic of the headphones, I feel that on-ear headphones like these are, if you can see here, they're going on top of my ear rather than around it. I do much prefer using over-the-ear headphones. I don't know about the rest of you. So things like my Bayer Dynamic headphones or, you know, the Rode NT, um, you know, NTH100s, which again, I did review not too long ago. I find ones that proper encapsulate over my entire ear to be far more comfortable above all else. Uh, the quality wise, fantastic. I think I sounded crystal clear. I really enjoyed listening to myself using them, but I just find the comfort is unmatched in a good pair of over the ear headphones. But again, still, if you don't have any good closed back headphones to do the job, then personally, you know, consider picking up that studio pack. Well, that's it. That's what I thought of the focus. Focus right too. What about you? Do you think it's worth upgrading your trusty, perhaps just as scuffed as ours, Focus Right Scarlet 2i2? Let me know what you think of this by, you know, replying in the comments below, write, you know, do a post, or just even just send me an email, studio at radio.co. That's it from me. Whatever you're doing, take care and happy broadcasting. And just before you go, how would you like to launch your very own online radio station? Surprisingly, it's a lot easier than you may think. And the absolute best way to get started is by chatting to myself or another member of the radio.co team. Just head to radio.co forward slash book a demo to schedule a video call with us, where we'll discuss your plans, answer your questions, and of course, guide you around the software. Or click on the link here to take your first step into launching your very own 24-7 global radio station.